the hour of convening having arrived, all members of this house will please report to the floor. All members will report to the floor of the house to their assigned seats. The clerk will ring the bell. All members will please take their seats. We're about to have the morning roll call. We're going to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber and the clerk will unlock the machines. Representative Viola Davis, would you please vote Representative Hutchinson present? Representative Gullett in room 341, would you please vote Representative Walensky present? Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning. It's a beautiful day out there today. Um, before we begin, the chair wants to make mention that um, Today's a special day in the history of this house. I know there's going to be a morning order later this morning, but today um, Speaker Tom Murphy would have been 97 years old. It's his birthday today. Speaker Murphy served 28 years as the speaker of this body, and at the time he left, he was the longest serving speaker in the history of the United States. I think now he's the second longest serving speaker in American history. Um, a great, great Georgian. Um, left his mark on this state. A son of rural West Georgia who saw the big picture of how the entire state had to prosper together. And there's evidence of that all over the state, particularly all over metropolitan Atlanta, from the good work that he did. We will begin our day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the lady from the 107th House District, Representative Shelley Hutchinson, Representative Hutchinson. Good morning, colleagues. Today it is a thrill to introduce my pastor today. If you know me, and some of you do, you know that I come from an extremely large Catholic family. Then I married into a larger Catholic family. And before I left Louisiana, I thought it was a requirement to be Catholic. I didn't know until Georgia that it wasn't. 
So I've been in Georgia since 1993, and I have belonged to three churches since then. And I loved all three. Um, I just felt like something was missing. And I have a colleague, a mentor. She was my um, she was my graduate advisor at UGA. Her name is Geraldine Jackson White. She's probably watching, so this is a shout out to her. She kept telling me, you've got to come to my church, you've got to come to my church, Our Lady of Lords downtown. I live in Snellville, so I was like, you know, it's a long drive, it's a Sunday morning. But one day I went with my family, and when I got there, it was beignet Sunday. <laughs> and I said, I hear you, Lord, I'm home. So we had the best, and there are two things I don't, I do not eat outside of Louisiana, gumbo and beignets. But Our Lady of Lords, if you catch them on beignet Sunday, take, you, you know, count your lucky stars. So let me tell you about Our Lady of Lords. Our Lady of Lords is the oldest African American Catholic church in Atlanta. And in 2003, they erected the historical marker honoring them for that. Reverend Je De Jeffrey Ott, who, by the way, went to the high school that's walking distance from my high school in New Orleans, he is a friar of the Order of Preachers known as Dominicans, serving as the pastor of Our Lady of Lords Catholic Church in Atlanta. Father Ott also serves as board chair of Interfaith Community in Initiatives Incorporated, a nonprofit which unites people to create lasting and transformative bonds to build a more humane and equitable society. Father Jeffrey has served on the Leadership Council for the Southern Dominican Province. Father Ott received the Masters of Arts in Theology and Masters of Divinity from Aquinas Institute of Theology in St. Louis, Missouri. He, he, he is that great. He, he uh, deserves that, um, that welcome. He, he received the Masters of Arts in Theology and Masters of Divinity from Aquinas Institute of Theology in St. Louis, Missouri, before becoming Pastor of Lords. Father Art served his alma mater, Xavier University in Louisiana, as university chaplain. Over the years, he has developed a deep interest in the spiritu spirituality of recovery and persons in recovery. He enjoys travel, singing, and communing with family and friends. Colleagues, I introduce to you Father Jeffrey Ott. Good morning. Psalm 147, verse 12 says, glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. And I, I like to begin uh, my engagement with you this morning with just a little few bars of a old song that I'm sure a lot of you know, so you're welcome to join in. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all harm. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. As Shelley said in her fine intro, I am the pastor of the first African-American Catholic church here in Atlanta, founded in 1912. And so we are celebrating uh, 100 and uh, whatever, do the math, 10, 11 years. <laughs> 
Uh, math is not my forte. Um, and um, I bring you greetings from our church community, which includes many fine folk like Representative Hutchinson from throughout the Atlanta area and other parts of the state and country since we have been celebrating our Sunday Mass live streamed uh, to everyone. And we are a growing church. We are about to embark on a $10 million capital campaign to build a new church. And so um, I bring you greetings from the hallowed grounds of our church campus where the neighborhood children used to play, which included the illustrious Georgia Denison, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we're also proud to note in this Women's History Month that our foundress, St. Catherine Drexel, not only blessed us with her patronage, but also with her holiness. Uh, as we continue celebrating uh, Women's History Month, I, I chose that song, Just a Closer Walk with Thee, because um, it was my grandmother's favorite song, and I wanted to honor her, the woman who helped me to grow into my faith. And uh, many was the day that I heard her singing as she went about her chores and cooking. She didn't fail to let me know every time we heard it in church, that's my favorite song. And um, so it conjures fond and loving memories for me. And another reason I like that song is because it reminds me and all of us that our relationship with Jesus, indeed our spiritual lives, is a day-to-day -day reality. And that's true for all of us. Sometimes it's a moment-to-moment -moment reality especially for those of us who are unemployed or working in the gig economy, maybe our constituents, our uh, parishioners, our uh, staff, uh, uh, people that we know, people that we don't know, and those who face the shadows of death with the coronavirus, along with all of the healthcare workers on the front lines, and. All of those people know the day-to-day, -day, the moment-to-moment -moment reality of life. Uh, now, if you're anything like me, you want the quick fix. Thank God for Amazon. The magic pill, the reality of our spiritual lives, though, is that they don't work that way. We don't get to take a pill and have all of our problems melt away. In fact, in infinite wisdom, the creator of the universe, the divine intelligence, somebody say divine, divine. intelligence, the one who loves us into being, that mandates that we have a daily walk, a daily walk, that Jesus teaches us that in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. My grandmother taught me that. And she taught me that to be successful spiritually means to surrender to the reality of our humanity, that we each live lives dependent upon one another, that none of us is independent from the other, that we are interconnected. And that's what our relationship with Jesus is all about. We humans take steps literally and figuratively trusting in the divine presence and trusting in one another. You know all about that, though, as representatives. You know all about the importance of those relationships. And our prayer for you, I know certainly all of us at Lourdes pray for Representative Hutchinson and, and all of you. I commit us to praying for you. Our prayer for you is that you understand more and more each day in your daily walk, that we are here to do good for one another, those that we know and especially those that we don't know. The Jesus I serve, the one who calls us into being, the one who gives us life, who saves us, was the one who taught us that we ought to do right by our fellow human and that we ought to lift up the good of everybody. And we ought to do that because we have been lifted up, because we have been given the opportunity to live and breathe and walk this day. 
And so it's my prayer that uh, you will walk in that way and walk in that spirit in all that you say and in all that you do, especially for your constituents and the good people of this state. Please join me in a closing prayer. Gracious creator, we thank you for the gift of this day and we ask that you give us a willing spirit to cooperate with your plan for us and for the good of all the people of the state of Georgia. And we humbly ask these and all other blessings in the spirit of unity and peace. And let the people say amen. amen. And now we'll lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Chair recognizes Chairman Hogan, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal of a previous legislative day and found it to be correct. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, when I was able to sit down there with Matt Dollar, he told me one time during the middle of the week, Chairman Matt Dollar said, the first five days after a weekend are the hardest. <laughs> Got to be careful what you say to him. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, the 159th Ms. Follow Me establishes the order of business and in her first part of the period, unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 745 by Representative Jackson, the 128th bill being titled an act to, act to amend that act to reconstitute the Board of Education of Washington County. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 746 by Representative Lim of the 99th and Maynard of the 56th. The bill being titled an Act to Amend Code Section 34.2.10 relating to employees du employers' duty with respect to provision of safe employment generally. Industry and Labor. House Bill 747 by Representative Lim of the 99th and Maynard of the 56th. Bill being titled an Act to Amend Code Section 12.9.3. The Fish Code of Georgia Annotator relating to definitions relative to air quality. Natural Resources and Environment. House Resolution 369 by Representative Bazemore, the 63rd, Bruce, the 61st, Jackson, the 64th, Bodie, the 62nd, Thomas, the 65th, a resolution honoring the life of Congressman John Lewis and dedicating a road in his memory. Transportation. House Resolution 370 by Representative Roberts, the 52nd, Williams, the 37th, Schofield, the 60th, Lopez, the 86th, Maynard, the 56th, 50, 56th. A resolution creating a House Study Committee on the Impact of Active Shooter Drills in Schools. Education. Senate Bill 280 by Senator Gooch, the 51st, a bill being titled an act to amend the act, creating the Board of Commissioners of Lumpkin County. 
Intergovernmental coordination. Senate Bill 282 by Senator Anderson, the 24th, Miller the 49th, Mullis the 53rd, Dugan the 30th, Gooch the 51st, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend the act, creating the Board of Elections and Registration for Lincoln County. Intergovernmental coordination. Senate Bill 283 by Senator Anderson, the 24th, Miller the 49th, Mullis the 53rd, Dugan the 30th, Gooch the 51st, and others. Bill being titled an act to reconstitute and reestablish the Board of Elections and Registration for Lincoln County. Intergovernmental coordination. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 738 by Representative Miranda of the 96th, Beverly of the 143rd, Mitchell of the 88th, Park of the 101st, Scuffield of the 60th, and others. A bill relating to seeds and plants. House Bill 739 by Representative Ralston of the 7th. The bill to amend an act to provide a new charter for the city of Blue Ridge. House Bill 740. By Representative Benton of the 31st, a bill to amend an act incorporating the town of Pendergrass. House Bill 741 by Representative Schofield of the 60th, Beverly of the 143rd, Scott of the 76th, Hutchinson of the 107th, Davis of the 87th, and others, a bill relating to temporary assistance for needy families. House Bill 742 by Representative Dubnik of the 29th, Dunahoo of the 30th, Hawkins of the 27th, Barr of the 103rd, a bill to continue the existence of the Gainesville City School District. House Bill 743 by Representative Dickey of the 140th, a bill to amend an act providing a new charter for the city of Fort Valley. House Bill 744 by Representative Anolowitz of the 42nd, Thomas of the 39th, Allen of the 40th, Bruce of the 61st, Smith of the 41st, and others, a bill to amend an act creating a new charter for the city of Smyrna. House Resolution 353 by Representative Cannon of the 58th, Beverly of the 143rd, Williams of the 168th, resolution recognizing General Larry Platt and dedicating a bridge in his honor. House Resolution 354 by Representative Gilliard of the 162nd, a resolution recognizing Mayor Edna Jackson dedicating an interchange in her honor. House Resolution 355 by Representative Gilliard of the 162nd, a resolution honoring the life of Representative Bobby Lee Hill and dedicating an inter interchange in his memory. Senate Bill 10 by Senator Jones of the 10th, Butler of the 55th, James of the 35th, Say of the 34th, Devonport of the 44th, and others, a bill relating to offenses against public order. Senate Bill 62 by Senator Tippins of the 37th, Jen of the 47th, Miller of the 49th, Gooch of the 51st, Albers of the 56th, and others, a bill relating to elections and primaries. Senate Bill 72 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd, Miller of the 49th, Gooch of the 51st, Albers of the 56th, Hickman of the 4th, and others, a bill relating to primaries and elections. House bill, Senate Bill 74 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd, Miller of the 49th, Gooch of the 51st, Walker of the 3rd of the 20th, Albers of the 56th, and others, a bill relating to elections and primaries. Senate Bill 90 by Senator Jackson of the 2nd, Miller of the 49th, Jones of the 10th, Mullis of the 53rd, and Anderson of the 43rd, a bill relating to state government. Senate Bill 97 by Senator Jackson of the 2nd, Harbison of the 15th, Jones of the 10th, Robin of the 5th, Jones of the 2nd of the 22nd, a bill relating to determination of in state resident status for, of students for tuition or fees. Senate Bill 98 by Senator Beach of the 21st, Jones of the 25th, Gooch of the 51st, Jen of the 47th, Watson of the 1st, the bill related to highways, bridges, and ferries. Senate Bill 106 by Senator Davenport of the 44th, Jones of the 2nd of the 22nd, Duggan of the 30th, Sims of the 12th, Butler of the 55th, and others, a bill relating to multi tiered system of supports prior to suspension or expulsion for certain students. Senate Bill 120 by Senator Tippins of the 37th, Kennedy of the 18th, Cowser of the 46th, Jones of the 2nd of the 22nd, Tillery of the 19th, and others, a bill relating to solicitors general in state courts. Senate Bill 144 by Senator Tippins of the 37th, Gooch of the 51st, Cowser of the 46th, Miller of the 49th, Summers of the 13th, and others. A bill relating to general provisions for housing authorities. Senate Bill 156 by Senator Harbin of the 16th, Tippins of the 37th, Lucas of the 26th, Tillery of the 19th, Gooch of the 51st, and others. A bill relating to labor and industrial relations. Senate Bill 162 by Senator Beach of the 21st, Albers of the 56th, Thompson of the 14th. A bill relating to judges. Number of Judges of Superior Court, Senate Bill 164 by Senator Hofstetler of the 52nd, Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Oracle of the 36th, Butler of the 55th, a bill relating to definitions relative to juvenile delinquency, crimes and offenses, and who may perform HIV tests. Senate Bill 202 by Senator Burns of the 23rd, Miller of the 49th, Duggan of the 30th, Gitchen of the 47th, Anderson of the 24th, and others, a bill relating to elections and primaries. Senate Bill 213 by Senator Harper of the 7th, Payne of the 54th, Mullis of the 53rd, Summers of the 13th, Gooch of the 51st, a bill relating to contracts and purchases by state sco public schools. Senate Bill 218 by Senator Walker the 3rd of the 20th, Duggan of the 30th, Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Miller of the 49th, Kennedy of the 18th, and others, a bill relating to vacation of office. 
Senate Bill 225 by Senator Harperson of the 15th, Brett of the 33rd, Payne of the 54th, Duggan of the 30th, Anderson of the 43rd, and others, a bill relating to prestige license plates. Senate Bill 226 by Senator Anavarte of the 31st, Mellis of the 53rd, Miller of the 49th, Gooch of the 51st, Thompson of the 14th, and others, a bill relating to sale or distribution of harmful materials to minors. Senate Bill 234 by Senator Kennedy of the 18th, Strickland of the 17th, Parrott of the 42nd, Jones of the 2nd of the 22nd, Watson of the 1st, a bill relating to civil practice. Senate Bill 237 by Senator Harbison of the 15th, Duggan of the 30th, bill relating to special license plates. Senate Bill 238 by Senator Strickland of the 17th, bill relating to general provisions. Senate Bill 241 by Senator Duggan of the 30th, Miller of the 49th, Gooch of the 51st, Kennedy of the 18th, Couch of the 46th, and others, a bill relating to elections and primaries. Senate Bill 247 by Senator Anderson of the 24th, Walker of the 3rd of the 20th, Miller of the 49th, Goodman of the 8th, Summers of the 13th, and others, a bill relating to Agricultural Commodity Commission, Senate Bill 253 by Senator Merritt of the 9th, Burns of the 23rd, Butler of the 55th, Duggan of the 30th, Gooch of the 51st, and others, a bill relating to elections of primaries, Senate Bill 256 by Senator Burke of the 11th, Gooch of the 51st, Watson of the 1st, Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Huffstetler of the 52nd, and others, a bill relating to conservation and natural resources, Senate Bill 260 by Senator Harper of the 7th, a bill relating to promulgation and adoption of rules and regulations and sharing of information. Senate Bill 276 by Senator Kennedy of the 18th, Strickland of the 17th, Mullins of the 53rd, Harper of the 7th, Duggan of the 30th, bill relating to county law libraries. Senate Resolution 102 by Senator Gooch of the 51st, Beach of the 21st, Miller of the 49th, Jen of the 47th, Jones of the 25th, and others. Resolution creating the Georgia Commission on E-Commerce and Freight Infrastructure Funding. Senate Resolution 134 by Senator Walker of the 3rd of the 20th, Duggan of the 30th, Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Butler of the 55th, Parent of the 42nd, and others. Resolution proposing the amendment to the Constitution to the state of Georgia so as to provide for the suspension of compensation for certain public officers. Senate Resolution 154 by Senator Oreck of the 36th, Hustetler of the 52nd, Mollis of the 53rd, Butler of the 55th, Strickland of the 17th, and others. Resolution creating a joint study committee for strengthening Georgia's future workforce. Through second readers. Reports of standing committees, the clerk will read. Representative Jan Hankersley, the 160th District Chairman of the Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local, set on consideration the following bills of the House. Instruct the meeting report same back to the House following recommendations. House Bill 655, dude pass. House Bill 682, dude pass. House Bill 683, dude pass. House Bill 684, dude pass. House Bill 685, dude pass. House Bill 705, dude pass. House Bill 707, dude pass. House Bill 708, dude pass. House Bill 711, dude pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Jan Tankersley of the 160th District Chairman. Representative Cooper. The 43rd District the Chairman of the Committee on Health and Human Services submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Health and Human Services has sat under consideration the following bills of the Senate and has instructed me to report saying back to the House the following recommendations. Senate Bill 5, do pass by committee substitute. Senate Bill 46, do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Cooper, the 43rd District Chairman. Representative Lumsden of the 12th District Chairman of the Committee on Insurance submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Insurance has had in consideration the following bill of the Senate. It was instructed me to report same back to the House following recommendations. The Senate Bill 43, due pass by committee substitute, respectfully submitted. Representative Eddie Lumsden of the 12th District Chairman. That completes the reading of the reports of standing committees.
All right, we're going on now to the local calendar. We are going on to the local calendar. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills. If there is no objection, we will vote on the local calendar as a whole with a recorded vote. Hearing none, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the local calendar. House Bill 655 by Representative Wilson, the 80th City of Brookhaven. House Bill 682 by Representative Jaspers, the 11th Pickens County. House Bill 683 by Representative Jaspers, the 11th Pickens County. House Bill 684 by Representative Nix, the 69th Troop County. House Bill 685 by Representative Jaspers, the 11th City of Jasper. House Bill 705 by Representative Mathis of the 144th Bleckley County. House Bill 707 by Representative Watson of the 172nd City of Coolidge. House Bill 708 by Representative Dreyer of the 59th City of Hapeville. House Bill 711 by Representative Yerda of the 152nd City of Sylvester. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on the local calendar? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bills? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall these bills now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bills on the local calendar will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bills on the local calendar, the ayes are 140, the nays are 15. These bills having received the requisite constitutional majority are therefore passed. All right, we're going on now to morning orders. This house will come to order. House will come to order. All members, please take your seats. Chair recognizes for a morning order. The dean of this house, the Honorable Dean Calvin Smyrie, for a morning order. In, in, in. This is on Speaker Murphy. So anybody, uh, I tell you, I um, when uh, Speaker Ross and I were talking the other day, we were talking and and uh, we've talked about Speaker Tom Murphy. And today is his birthday; he'd be 97 today. And I called Michael Judge Murphy, as I told uh, the whip, uh, majority whip. And then I was talking to Leader Beverly this morning. And, Many people said, you know, today is Speaker Murphy's birthday. And I said, yeah, I said, I'm on. Speaker Ross didn't ask me to say a word. And, and uh, I met uh, Speaker Murphy 47 years ago. And, I, and uh, Speaker Ross has told this story to the, every freshman class in the last few years. And, and people said, how did you get so close to Speaker Murphy? And I said, well, in December 1974, I went to see him, uh, Re Representative Albert Thompson. Um, took me to see him. He was the first African-American chair of a committee here in the House. And uh, he said, son, he said, what can I do for you? I said, Mr. Speaker, they told me I need to come see you about my, my committee assignment. He said, yeah. He said, what committee you want to be on? I said, I'd like to be on appropriations. <laughs> he laughed. He said, he said, appropriations? He said, you're a freshman. I said, yeah, but I'm only going to the banking business. I want to be on appropriations. He said, not only will you not be on the committee, you won't be in the room when we're talking. <laughs> 
I said, okay. okay. He said, what's your next committee? I said, ways and means. He said, oh, so son, who, who you been talking to? I said, he said, ways and means is another one of those. You won't, you won't even be around when we talking uh, about ways and means. He said, what's your third committee? I said, banks and banking. He said, oh, my God. He said, son, I don't know who you've been talking to, but I've never pointed a freshman to the banks and bank committee. That's just not heard of. He said, but since it's your third choice, I'm going to point you to it. And he called the lady in and point, I'm going to point this freshman to banks and banking. And about, and you know how he is, uh, uh, Madam Chair. And about two weeks later, he saw me at an event. He put his arms around me. He said, you know what? You and I are going to be all right. He said, you keep your cards close to your chest. And he said, I like you. He said, I'm going to put you on ways and means in four years, and you're going to be on appropriations in eight. That's the best I can do. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I went on, uh, and, and I said, Mr. Speaker, why, what, 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 what bird told you? What did the bird tell you? The bird told me that banks and banking was your first choice, and you gave it to me as your third. <laughs> and he said, that's pretty darn clever, young man. So uh, we became friends. Um, uh, and uh, over the years, and um, I had so, he, had, he was so pivotal in my career here in the House, and uh, uh, Speaker Murphy was a great person, and, and I told him one day, I said, Mr. Speaker, you gotta, I, I got a load, I was chair of the Democratic Party of Georgia, chair of the Democratic Caucus in the House, Rules Committee Chairman, and on the Budget Conference Committee. Four positions, and I, everybody has, has one of those now. I said, Mr. Speaker, you need to lighten the load. I need to, I need to come off of one of them. He said, he said, let me say something to you. He said, when I wake up in the morning, I have two people to call, and you're one of them. I said, who's the other one? He said, Terry Coleman, Chairman of the Appropriations <laughs> Committee. He said, things are going all right. But Tom Murphy was the longest serving speaker in the history. He almost served 30 years as Speaker of the House, 30 years. And uh, he was a great man. He was a great Georgian. And I miss him dearly. I called his son this morning. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I know I went over my time, but I want to thank you for, for uh, our conversations about our private conversation about Speaker Murphy. And I want to thank you for your leadership in remembering uh, Speaker Murphy today on his 97th birthday. And all of you all who served with Speaker Murphy know what I'm talking about. And uh, he was a great Georgian. And uh, happy birthday, Speaker Murphy. Thank you. Some of you may have had an opportunity, if you haven't, it's well worth the drive to the uh, Murphy Institute over at the University of West Georgia, where they have, uh, they, they recreated his office. And if you never had the opportunity or the, uh, shall I say, the experience of going in his office, it's well worth going over because I don't think um, he ever threw a coffee mug away or a cap that he got in those 28 or 29 years. And they're all over there in that office today. Um, you get a real sense of him. Chair recognizes for a morning order Representatives LaHood, Chairman Corbett, Chairman Burchette, and Representative Sharper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the House, I rise this morning on behalf of the Lowndes County delegation to recognize the VSU men's basketball team. They won the first ever in team history, or school history, a Gulf South Conference title over Alabama Huntsville uh, last Sunday, 75 to 70. This awards them a automatic bid to the Gulf South Conference into the DC, uh, NCAA Division II Men's Basketball South Regional hosted by VSU March 13th through the 16th at the complex. Could everybody join me at, on three and say, Go Blazers. One, two, three, Go, go Blazers. Blazers. 
chair recognizes Representative Schofield for a morning order. She waves. Chair recognizes Chairman Blackman for a morning order. The chair of the Ways and Means Committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, I am here to thank this body for supporting HB 593, providing much needed tax relief to our fellow Georgians in what is very challenging times. The current pandemic has taught us that states that run a tight fiscal ship and leave as much money as possible in the hands of their citizens are much more able to weather this crisis. So I was a bit saddened and confused to learn the federal government's latest COVID relief package apparently bars states like ours from providing this kind of tax relief to our citizens. So surely um, this is not true. I, I feel like maybe we misunderstood. So if uh, someone can explain this Washington math to me, um, it's concerning. But while I'm waiting for that, I'd like to ensure the people of Georgia that this body remains dedicated to lowering the tax burden on our fellow Georgians, Georgians and on the farmers and small business owners who form the backbone of this economy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So if I understand this, the, the federal government is going to tell states they cannot reduce the tax burden on their citizens. That's the way the language reads, sir. Okay, just wanted to be clear. Clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. Honoring the life and memory of Dr. Randall Barfield. Honoring the worldwide victims of genocide and recognizing March 12, 2021. Congratulating and commending Linda Brenner for receiving the 2021 Yellow Rose Nikki T. Randall Service Leader Award. Recognizing March 29th, 2021 as Community Activist Day to acknowledge unsung hero activists. Congratulating and commending Dr. Beverly Ann Townsend for re receiving the 2021 Nikki T. Randall Service Leader Award. And for other purposes, that completes the reading of the privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none, and the resolutions are adopted. What purpose does Chairman Martin rise? A parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Speaker. State your inquiry. Isn't it true, Mr. Speaker, sometimes things take a minute to sink in with me, and I, it just sunk in. Is it not true that I heard a vote in favor of that bill in the U.S. House today puts the tax cut we passed in this body by implementing an increase in a standard deduction for all Georgians that file without anonymization, it would put that in jeopardy, a yes vote on that package in the U.S. House today. Isn't that true, Mr. Speaker? I'm not sure since we had already acted, but um, um, I'm sure that if it is true, that our delegation unanimously will oppose that. One thing, and again, we would fight for our taxpayers, but it would put it, uh, isn't it true, that it might put it in jeopardy for legalization. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right. Going on now to announcements. Oh, I'm sorry. Chair, what purpose does Chairman Blackman rise? Make a motion. What purpose does Chairman Blackman rise? To make a motion. State your motion. Move that uh, Senate Bill 193 be moved from the Ways and Means Committee to the Governmental Affairs Committee. Both chairs are in agreement. Clerk will read the caption. Senate Bill 193 by Senator Mullins, the 53rd, Harper the 7th, Harper's the 15th, Jackson the 2nd, Hatch the 50th, and others to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 5 of Title 48 of the Fish Code of George Ann Taylor relating to ad valorem taxation of property.
on the gentleman's motion that House Bill or Senate Bill 193 be moved from the Ways and Means Committee to the Governmental Affairs Committee. Is there objection? Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered. We're going on now to announcements. Going on to announcements. Chair recognizes Chairman Tankersley for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've had a, cha a change in time for the Intergovernmental Coordination Committee. Today, it is now at 1 o'clock in CLOB 406. It had been scheduled for noon, but I do realize you'd like to eat, and some of you will go to the Rural Caucus. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Reeves for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Reeves Subcommittee of Judiciary Non-Civil is going to meet at 1 o'clock in room 415 today, and we are going to dissect and tear up some Senate bills. Uh, chair recognizes Chairman Watson for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Rural Caucus will meet today at uh, 12 noon over at Twin Towers Floyd Room. We've got the uh, propane folks and uh, Georgia Link there as our host. So look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Dollar for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Creative Arts and Entertainment will be meeting today at 1.30 across the street in 506. We're going to be uh, getting a pretty robust uh, update on the uh, film industry in Georgia. Uh, all members are invited to attend. Come here, at, except for Don Hogan. Thank you. <laughs> Chair recognizes Chairman Workheiser for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Industry and Labor Committee will meet today at CLOB room 506 at 3 o'clock. Thank you. Chair recognizes represent, or Chairman Green for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. State Properties will meet today at 3.30 in the Capitol, room 403. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Drenner for an announcement. The DeKalb delegation meeting uh, for de today at noon, and you can pick up food in the CLOB in room 514 beginning at 1130. Thank you. That completes our announcements. Chair recognizes the Majority Leader of the House for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move that this House stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Thursday, March 11, 2021. The Majority Leader has moved that this House be adjourned until Thursday, March 11 at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes appear to have it. This house will be adjourned until Thursday at 10 a.m.